Hey guys, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning. I've had like one hour sleep in the past 28 hours, and maybe like five in the past 48. So I'm just gonna do something fun and something that doesn't take like a lot of thinking today. I've got this product called Sand. It's basically like beach sand, but it's more moldable because it's got polymer in it. So we're gonna we're gonna make some shapes with that. And if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up and comment down below things that you want to see me make next time if there is a next time. So yeah, let's get to it. Alright, so I've got everything set up here in this little sandbox thing that I got with it. I've also got this knife. And this little mold thing. Uh, if I remember correctly, it came with a cylinder too no idea where it's gone, so I'm just gonna use a cup. I've got this little cup here, so if I need a cylinder, there's a cylinder. So I'm just gonna flatten this out, I guess, make like a surface to work on. Alright, so there's like a little, little surface for us to work on, and we're going to make, um, let's go with, try a backpack. I know some of you guys are starting school again, but that's not what you wanted was a reminder that you're starting school again soon, or maybe you're, you've already started school. Uh, in either case, I'm very sorry. Um, but just try to have fun with it. Like, I know it sucks. I know it feels like, oh man, school, how can I have fun with school? But I think the, the fact of the matter is as much as school sucks, even the bad memories, they're going to be fond memories eventually. And I know that's hard to believe, but... I mean, let me tell you guys a little story about a teacher I had at one point. Uh, let's say her name is Delilah, and her last name is, um, Jones. So, Miss Jones was my geometry teacher. I had her for, oh, I think it was fifth period geometry. It was right before lunch. And I dreaded her class every day. Not because it was math, because I thought this looks more like a teacup. Upside down teacup. Let's go with an upside down teacup, because I don't know if I can make a backpack. Anyways, I had Mrs. Jones right before lunch. Every day. And you know what? That's what got me through that class was, hey, this sucks pretty badly, but lunch is soon, but I had her for geometry, and it's not because it was geometry class that I disliked it. I, I think for the most part, the subject in itself, I love geometry, I was really good at it. I could do all the homework before she even taught the lesson, so I'd have like 20 minutes to myself every class, sometimes 30, depending on what lesson it was, because I taught myself the entire subject. So my problem with Miss Jones was not the subject, but rather how poor of a teacher she was. Now it wasn't too much of a problem for me at first that she was a terrible teacher. Um, sometime, sometime about halfway through the year, it, it became my problem because middle of class, she would pull me up to look at the textbook and her math work, and it was my job to tell her whether or not she was doing it correctly. We're gonna smash this teacup, I'm not into it anymore. We're gonna go, I wanna make a turtle, that's what I'm gonna go for, a turtle. But yeah, I became her problem checker. Now some of the other people I uh, went to school with had her for chemistry, and I think she also taught physics which, again, was a terrible idea. I don't know, I don't know what else she taught. Physical science, probably one other subject. I'm not, I quite, can't quite remember. But they had her for chemistry, and we got to hear how terrible she was at chemistry. She just, I can't say that she wasn't, she wasn't intelligent. But I also can't say that she knew what she was doing. I don't think she was teacher material. And I also don't think she was as smart as everyone thought she was, where a lot of people thought her issue was that she was really smart, but she couldn't, like, 
transfer the information, I don't think that was a problem at all. And I'm saying that because I was constantly brought up front to tell her whether or not she was doing her math right. I think she just didn't know what she was doing. But yeah, so I guess that's my story about her. And you're probably wondering why you're telling me this, because you're like, hey, that's, there's no bright, happy thing to this story. Um, actually, I'm gonna tell you the good side now. So, one of the girls in my class, I wouldn't say we weren't friends, because we were definitely friends before this. And I ended up tutoring her in geometry, maybe like an hour, once, once every one or two weeks. You know, help her out, make sure she passed the tests and stuff. And understood what was going on, because our teacher was not a teacher. But, um, yeah, so I would help her out. And uh, I think it made us become better friends. I got to know her a lot better than before we started, and I'm really thankful for that opportunity that was afforded to me, even though it was afforded to me because the teacher sucked. But uh, I think that was a good thing that came out of it. And I think it bonded my, my friend group to talk about how terrible of a teacher she was. It was is it positive bonding? Not necessarily. But we all complained to each other and we had a great time. I think we had a great time complaining. Maybe not a great time complaining. Let me rephrase that. Complaining was a good thing for us. It helped us, helped us vent about how awful she was. And, uh, got lots of stories out of it. Uh, my favorite thing was her unicorn bridge. We were in geometry and there were, there was this rainbow bridge for unicorns to cross. And there were the pink unicorns and the blue unicorns. And the blue unicorns were X's and the pink unicorns were Y. And that's how you did algebraic equations like uh, 2X plus 3Y equals 5X or whatever. That probably won't even figure out. But, you know, stuff like that and be like, oh yeah, the blue unicorn needs to cross over to where the pink unicorns are. And then it needs to get its geometry sword and it needs to rain coins as they cross over the bridge and that's basically how she taught. Other than the pink and blue unicorns I have no idea what anything else stands for. Um, I'm not sure what the what the goal was with with telling us this. Well I mean I guess the goal was for us to understand geometry but I had no freaking clue what she was talking about and I actually understood the topic before she brought in all the unicorns but no one really got the I didn't even know what the pink and blue unicorns were until halfway through the year. Most people did not understand her unicorn analogy to in the least bit. So I think that was a failed teaching on her part. Um, what else can I talk about her? Well, we still talk about this teacher to this day. We still we still reminisce. Uh, one of the things she said was let's, in our chemistry class was let's balance this mother. Uh, that was that was an interesting saying. She used to always say uh, wrong Jones and. Obviously, Jones isn't her name, so it sounds a little weird to me not actually using her name, but she would say, Wrong Jones. And, Get with me! And she had lots of little finicky sayings that she used, and because of that, I think we grew closer to each other by laughing at her. <laughs> That's basically the moral of the story. But looking back, awful experience, wouldn't wish it upon anyone, but it brought me closer to my friend group, and it was something for us to bond over. And I don't know if I'd want a different teacher in that spot. I mean, I, I would. I'd actually want one that was teaching. But at the same time, I think enough good came out of it that I'm not, like, too salty about it. I mean, I'm still pretty salty, but I'm not as salty as I would have been as if there was absolutely no benefit to it. And I would have preferred to get all the benefits with it and actually have a good teacher, but, you know, that just wasn't the case. And I'm glad that we can all look back on the situation and laugh at it now, even though it was pure hell going through it. So that's one, well, that's one thing you can look forward to in school, is looking back with all your friends, terrible things you all went through, or even good things that you went through. There are good things to look back on high school. Uh, I still keep in contact with my AP teacher. She taught us AP Lit, AP Lang, and she's one of the most wonderful, beautiful women I've ever known. She actually left the school, good on her, because it was just an awful school in general, but she left the school that we went to actually the same year that we left so when we graduated that was her last year teaching uh, with a little bit of 
She was gonna go back originally, but we kind of pushed her to leave, and she did, and I'm glad she did, and now she's a principal at another school. So, I mean, there are definitely other opportunities out there for her, but without us all collectively attending this school at the same time, and her teaching at the school, I would have never gotten to know her, and I'm glad that I do know her. I think, I don't know, just looking back, like, you know, as much as it sucked, a lot of good things came out of it. So I guess my my message to you guys is as terrible as school is, you're gonna have something to look back on. And it's good to have stuff to look back on and memories and stories to tell with people. I think that's my favorite thing about life is being able to be like, yo, so this happened to me. And being able to sit there and tell people who maybe aren't already my friends, who didn't go through these experiences with me, and then they can share stories. And it's just a short story sharing party. And you know, everyone wins in the long run because who doesn't like a good story? Freaking love being able to be told stories about other people's lives. I think stories are what bring us all together. Maybe not always in the sense of books, because I know some people don't enjoy reading, but everyone enjoys stories in some aspect of a situation, whether it's reading stories or hearing stories from other people or telling stories about experiences you went through or, or straight up writing fiction. Like everyone has something about storytelling, even if it's movies. Something about storytelling brings us all together in some aspect or another. And I, that's what I love about storytelling. So anyways, this is our turtle. I'm gonna name him Lenny. That's my name for him. This is Lenny the turtle. And he's beautiful, and he survived the world, he survived, he survived the ocean, and just like Lenny the turtle surviving the ocean, you guys can survive school. Actually, Lenny's not gonna survive much, much longer. Goodbye, Lenny. See you in the next world. What's the moral of the story today? The moral of the story today is I told you about a terrible teacher I have, and just make the best out of what you're given. And what I've been given is the sand, I don't know what else to do with it. You know, okay, I'm kind of seeing Sandy's house from Spongebob here, so that's what we're gonna end with. We're gonna end with Sandy's house from Spongebob. Right now we've got this little bubble thing going on. Oh man, have you guys watched Spongebob? Spongebob was like my jam. It's always been my jam. Still my jam, he's so memeable. So freaking memeable. But like, I don't know, he's a good thing to relax you when you get home. Do your homework first. Or like take like a 30 minute break and then do your homework. It depends on who you are as a person. I personally did my homework while I was watching YouTube videos, but I could do that because I'd still get my homework done. Homework in passing high school is important because it lets you move on to your next step in life. Which is, for some of us, college. For some of us, it won't be college, and that's okay. But if you do go to college, you're gonna, you're gonna be so much more fulfilled in college because it's something that you actually, after you get past your, uh, I guess your associate, your, your gen ed classes, but college will be super fulfilling because it'll be something you actually wanted to learn. And you'll find yourself a lot more motivated to do stuff if you're not already motivated to do stuff. Like I found lots of motivation in high school as much as I hated it. I tried to get all my crap done because I needed to. But, you know, it's important to find passions in life and follow those passions because you will be a much better unit of society. You'll be a much more useful unit of society if you don't already- if you're not already doing something that you feel is useful. And sometimes entertainment is useful. Making your friends laugh, like, that is something they need. So if that is your role, making people laugh, then do it, because that's a very important role. If I didn't get to laugh, uh, man, I would've been so stressed in high school. So sometimes your role is the class clown. Sometimes it's okay to be funny. Just know your limits and when it's okay to be funny and when it's not okay to be funny. Because, you know, there are moments in time where it's like, alright, this is not the place to be funny. This is not the place to goof around. And that's okay, because there always is a place where it's There's always a time when it's time to goof around. And so that's, you know, find your place in life and work at it to the best of your ability. That's the best advice I can give you 
as someone who graduated high school two months ago. And just do your dang best and feel good, follow your passion, but make sure your passion contributes to some place in society, whether it's making people smile or making freaking rockets from NASA because you're an OG boss person who's way smarter than I will ever be. Like, if your place is making freaking rockets for NASA, like, props to you, space is so cool. Right, so here's Sandy's house from Spongebob. I guess it could also be an igloo. But we're gonna say Sandy lives here. I get it, Sandy. Sandy lives here. Ha, <laughs> ha. Question your life now. Question the choices you made that brought you to this moment where I was able to make that sand pun. Because Sandy. Thanks for watching. If you even made it to this point, I'm so sorry you had to go through this. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. I don't know why you'd give it a thumbs up, but maybe you just like me acting like an idiot because I'm low on sleep. But if you like this, give it a thumbs up. Suggest so down below what I should build next time because I think that was the key problem with this video is I didn't know what to do with sand. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.